Hi there, I'm Nick with MarkForged, and today we're going to be unboxing and setting up one of our Industrial Series composite 3D printers. Our Industrial Series includes the X3, X5, and X7 3D printers. So if you're looking to set up and install one of those models, you've come to the right place. Let's get started. This video is intended as a supplement to our Industrial Series user guide, which can be found on our support website. You can always find the latest information, tutorials, and maintenance info there at support.markforge.com. Your printer and its lower cabinet will be delivered on a pallet, each with a cover box. The box does not have a bottom, and the printer will sit directly on the pallet, so please take care when unboxing and moving the printer. The printer and cabinet are heavy and require two people to move or set up. To make the unboxing process easier, you'll need a sharp tool like a box cutter, a pair of wire cutters, as well as a pair of tin snips or similar. We'll start by carefully cutting the metal banding attaching the boxes to the pallet, then lifting the cabinet box off. Place the cabinet on a sturdy work surface and carefully remove the plastic bag that it's wrapped in. Lift the other box off the printer and place the safety instructions on top aside. Carefully remove the protective plastic bag and then stack the printer on top of the cabinet like this. Make sure to review the safety instructions booklet prior to continuing with the unboxing process. Remove the getting started card from the visor and set it aside. You'll need the card later to set up your Iger organization and register your printer to it. Next, remove and discard the plastic film and any remaining tape or foam from the printer visor. Peel the protective film off of the printer touchscreen. Lift the printer visor and gently remove the accessory kit box from the printer. Remove and discard the plastic wrap from the accessory kit as well. Using wire cutters or a similar clipper, Carefully remove the two zip ties, which are connecting the print head and the print bed stage. Let's unbox the accessory kit to continue. Inside, you'll find your print bed protected in bubble wrap, an accessory bag with a number of tools, accessories, and maintenance parts, a print bed scraper, and if you have a printer capable of continuous fiber reinforcement, a number of fiber spools compatible with your printer. We'll soon need some items from the accessory bag, so let's open that now. Inside the accessory bag, you'll find a number of tools, cables, accessories like your Wi-Fi antenna, and a number of spare parts for maintenance like extra nozzles. Next, we're going to connect a networking adapter to the back of the printer, either via Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi antenna. If you decide to use Ethernet, simply plug an internet-connected Ethernet cable into the Ethernet port. For Wi-Fi connectivity, remove the protective cover from the SMA jack on the back of the printer, and then install the Wi-Fi antenna. Plug the power cord into the back of the printer, and the other end into a wall outlet. Make sure there's no remaining protective packaging left on the printer, and then turn your printer on with the on-off switch next to the power cord. Wait for it to power up. Initial startup will take several minutes, so wait until you see the home screen appear and start reading room temperature before you continue. Next, we're going to install the print bed. First, lower the print bed stage by hand. This is safe to do so when the printer is not printing. Simply gently press down with two fingers near the center of the stage until it lowers down to the bottom of the printer. Take the print bed out of the protective bubble wrap and orient it with the notches on the print bed facing the back of the printer. Line up the notches with the two linear bearings and gently deposit the print bed on the stage. The heads of the cap screws will locate securely into the three grooves on the stage. Our first interaction with the printer's user interface is to connect it to the internet. To do so, touch the networking icon from the top bar and select the networking option you installed earlier. If you choose Wi-Fi, you'll need to select a network from the drop-down menu and then enter the network's password. Give the printer some time to establish a connection. You'll know it's successfully connected when you see the green check mark. After your printer has connected to the internet, you may notice a blue Update Available bar on the bottom of your screen. Click on it to navigate to the Update menu and choose Cloud Update to download and install the update over the internet. We regularly push new firmware versions with new features, security updates, and more so you should keep your printer updated to the latest firmware for the best experience. To update firmware via USB, please see Updating Firmware in the Industrial Printer User Guide. Next, we need to level the print bed and adjust the fiber nozzle height to calibrate the gap between the print nozzles and the bed. To get started, go to the printer touchscreen and select the menu icon in the top right of the home screen. From there, select Bed Level and then Laser Bed Level to start the bed level utility. The utility will start by homing the printhead and then ask you to navigate through a few informational screens. The printer will use its onboard laser micrometer to measure the current state of the print bed and then move to a leveling position over the first thumb screw. 
the printer touchscreen will show you leveling instructions and a live visual indicator of the status of the bed level at that position. Once you're done adjusting the bed height at that point, the utility will take you through leveling the bed at two other points, then we'll rescan to ensure the bed is fully level. Next, the utility will help you adjust the fiber nozzle height. The utility will first ask you to adjust the gap between the bed and the plastic nozzle by moving the bed up and down with buttons on the touchscreen, while measuring the gap distance with the brass shim labeled plastic shim. The plastic nozzle is the one located further to the rear of the printer. When you feel slight resistance on the shim between the plastic nozzle and the bed, you're ready to continue on to adjusting the fiber nozzle height. The position of the fiber nozzle is determined by its adjustment screw on the top of the printhead. Tighten the screw by turning it clockwise to lower the nozzle closer to the bed, or loosen it to raise the nozzle. We'll use the brass shim labeled fiber shim to measure the gap distance between the bed and the fiber nozzle. Adjust the nozzle until you can also feel slight resistance on the shim between the fiber nozzle and the bed. Once you're satisfied with the fiber nozzle height, you can cancel out of the utility. After we load a plastic filament, you can go back and run the fiber nozzle height routine that the utility suggests. Next, we'll need to connect the printer's dry box to the plastic extruder before we can load our plastic filament. The dry box is located inside the lower cabinet of the printer. It's shipped with a spool of onyx and the spool spindle assembly inside it. Remove both from the dry box before continuing. Insert one end of the plastic feed tube from the accessory bag into the adapter on the back of the dry box, and then feed the other end through the port on the back of the printer and up to the adapter on the plastic extruder. Ensure that the plastic feed tube has a smooth path into the back of the printer without sharp bends or kinks. Don't connect the other end to the extruder just yet. We'll do that after loading plastic filament into the extruder. Navigate to the printer menu and select materials, then load plastic to start the plastic loading utility. From here, we'll select meter load to provide the printer an estimate of material remaining, choose onyx, and then full spool, and the printer will begin heating up the plastic nozzle. While the printer heats up, open up a spool of onyx and place the desiccants inside the bag into the dry box. You should always discard any used desiccants from the dry box and only use the new ones anytime you load a new spool of material. Remove the magnetic cap from the spool spindle, insert the spindle through the spool barrel, and then replace the cap on the other side. Place the spool and spindle assembly into the dry box with the filament arranged so as to pass over the top of the spool before it enters the feed tube adapter. Release the end of the filament from the spool flange, break off a few inches, and then gently thread the end through the feed tube until one to two inches of filament exits the feed tube near the extruder. Go back to the touchscreen and wait for the heating process to finish. When the nozzle is up to temp, click next, then feed the end of the filament into the plastic extruder. You may need to straighten out the filament end a little to help it load into the extruder. Once the filament is feeding through the plastic Bowden tube, you can connect the feed tube to the plastic extruder adapter. When plastic exits the plastic nozzle, you can select stop and then cool down on the touchscreen to stop the loading process, cool down the nozzles, and exit the utility. Finally, go back to the dry box, close the lid, and ensure both latches are securely engaged. If you have a printer that's capable of printing continuous fiber reinforcement, you'll also need to load a spool of continuous fiber filament. To do so, open up a fiber spool bag. I'll choose a spool of carbon fiber here. Release the taped end of the filament spool and unspool about two to three feet of material while maintaining control over the end. Reapply the tape to the filament and the front flange of the spool, and then detach the magnetic spindle cap from the fiber spool post inside the rear left side of the printer. Place the spool on the post so that the spool will rotate clockwise as fiber is extruded. Replace the cap, then thread the filament through the brass cone at the end of the fiber feed tube until it reaches the fiber extruder. On the printer touchscreen, navigate to the menu and select materials, then load fiber, and choose meter load to provide the printer an estimate of material remaining. Select the fiber type that you've chosen to load and the spool size. The fiber extruder will then begin the loading routine. You may need to advance the fiber further into the feed tube to get it to catch into the extruder. Once the fiber begins to be pulled into the feed tube, release the tape holding it to the spool and maintain tension on the filament with your finger until the excess is loaded into the printer. When fiber begins to exit the nozzle, select cut on the touchscreen to cut the fiber and then select done to end the loading routine. And that's it. Our industrial series 3D printer is now ready for your first print. If you have any more questions or need more help with your printer, you can always go to our support website at support.markforge.com. 
Happy printing.